he survived dying from cholera in his childhood, nine months after he was born, a disease that claimed both his mother and elder brother, leaving him at the mercies of God and raised on the pulpit by a single serving pastor, Geoffrey Wokitala. He was about, um, about, it should be one year or nine months, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's when the mother left. I mean, she died corona, cholera. And um, the work of God, in fact, I had to give up uh, because the situation was a little bit hard for me. I had two children. It was Moses and the sister, who's called... Um, I was called uh, Esther Manji, a court. And uh, carrying them, you know, I tried to, to continue with them in the churches. When I go pastoring a church, I carry both of them in front of the church. And, you know, I, dis I discovered that, no, I need to give out. And I need to give responsibility to those because there are people who are free who can serve the Lord. Mm. GNPI uses solar kit around the world to help pastors and churches study the Bible better. Recently, we visited our pioneer subscriber and partnering pastor Geoffrey Wokitala, a father who introduced his son to the first solar kit that we distributed and sent him to MTI, Messiah Theological Institute in Mbale. Piano Moses, I I serve, I minister in the NTCC Church of Christ, Mdakori. Meet Mothers Othieno, a young pastor and graduate of MTI who uses our solar kit media tool to evangelize his community of Mudakori Church of Christ, which is infiltrated by belief in religion and bad cultural practices like witchcrafts other than Christ. Um, our church is NTCC Church of Christ is located here within Mudafor here. Uh, you can reach you if you reach to, uh, to the center they can direct you where it is. And uh, what do the people church, call it? Yes. What do people call it? What do people call it? Uh, it most people they just call it a church. Mm. Uh, like Mudakori Church of Christ Mdakori. or something Church of Christ uh, they or they just call it Mudakori Church. Most people and if you get members of inside, they are the one who will tell you mm. about the Church of Christ. But there are other churches around. Yeah. Even Anglican, it can be the Holy Church. Yeah. <laughs> what, we, what makes, <laughs> what identifies your church? Of course, uh, our church is a mm. Christian, uh, they, they say that that church is a Christian church. Mm. Uh, there are very many people are Catholics. Uh, and uh, they are just now coming to Christ one by one. Mm. Because uh, our church is a mm. Christian, uh, they, they say that that church is a Christian church. Mm. Uh, they are Christian. Mm. They mostly they call that born again church. Yeah, it has taken almost five years so far now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who studied? Uh, studied is Geoffrey. Started Geoffrey one. It's called uh, Geoffrey one. Mm -hmm. It's the one who started, but uh, unfortunately. He was not very serious. He lacked, he lacked what he, to feed the family. Then he went to look for, he went to look for money outside. He left the church. Mm -hmm. As now, Dr. Job also entered. Mm -hmm. And we started moving slowly with people. Mm -hmm. And so far, the church is, the church is, is, is growing now. Okay. Yeah. Who is Okitala Joshua? He is now the pastor of the church by now. Who is he to you? He is my father. Oh, okay. Yes. So give me a background of your Christian work. <clears throat> How did you get to know about God? Yeah, in my Christian life, mm. 
I I I grew up in a family where they are Christian, but uh, unfortunately I was I did not know anything about Christianity. Reaching a time they started narrating narrating for me the story how the how I grew up, and uh, they told me you know you just survived uh, your brother whom you follow died of cholera and uh, your mother also died of cholera but unfortunately you you survived with with one with one week because the mother left me with one week and uh, as i remembered that i just said god had a, a good plan for me to make him to live to, to leave me i live i have life and uh, i decided to 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 get baptized 2011 is where now i started knowing that i'm supposed to work for god uh, it was on the 9th to 2011 is where i got baptism and i started following christ you mentioned something about your mother mm, my your mother my real mother mm. Passed away. Mm. I have who is caring for me. My mm. stepmother is caring for me. Okay. When did she pass? He, he, they, they told me. Mm. When you were born? They told me that she passed on 19, 1997. Oh, okay. yes. How old were you? I don't know. You mentioned something about when you were born. Yes, of course, they told me, it is a bit confusing me, mm. because when I ask my museum with my granny, mother, mm. they don't rhyme with the years which I was born. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did she pass when you were born? Yes, she passed when I was born. <laughs> they told me that when you enter in a, into a family, all people, need, all people are going to die. So when, when the mother died and my mother died, you know, my mother also died, and the, and the one who's following, who was supposed to, whom he was following, that one died also. So I kneeled down and I said, at least now those two who are remaining, let them be a testimony. And uh, really God had my prayer, and uh, they survived. Uh, so I don't take it in granted that, granted that he, is he is there for he has he has a, God has a purpose and a reason for his life to to love to live because he even died but then he he resurrected again and so we discover that I myself as a father I know God one day one time God will show us that really he has a, has a plan for his life. Moses, together with his father, have been pastoring this church for about five years now. Since the former pastor left due to the circumstances and waves surrounding ministry, especially the local church in villages. However, the young pastor had dreams as well since his childhood. He wanted to do mechanics, a dream that he never reached due to circumstances unavoidable. The circumstances around Moses' growth did not make him a pastor, even when he was always carried to church by his father. But it is until of recent that Moses realized that God had to let him survive the cholera for a reason. If you try to ask yourself how many children have they left when they are still young and they grow, there are very few, and more especially growing without your mother is very hard. It made me to know that God had a plan for me and is calling me to serve him. And as we read in the Bible, in this world, the Bible tells us in Matthew, 20, in Matthew 28, when, when we read about that in Matthew 28, it tells us that we go to the world and we make, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the 
Father, the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It means he gave us the commission, and uh, that commission is why we are living. And uh, it, uh, that's why when I try to remember what happened in my life when I was still young, I just uh, discovered that I need to work for God. Few weeks ago, Moses has been using our solar kit to do his internship and also evangelize his community. And he has already registered a couple of results. You mentioned their names? Yeah. The one one was 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 a drunk, and he he was he was always coming to us. He was coming to me when he's drunk. He could tell me how how drinking is good and it can take his stress away. But as I was ministering to him, he changed his life, and he really changed completely. Because in the Akilan was the only one who, I, who, 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 all of them, they were drunkards and the others, they were witch doctors. But as I ministered to him, he changed his life and his whole family, they are praying up to today. And he has really changed his life. And even very many people say, what has happened to this person? Yeah. When those children come, the person called Moses, there's Dodo. When they come back, they come with that solar, solar kit. When they bring that solar kit, they show us. They also encourage us and strengthen us with the words from the Bible. And we become strong. And they encourage us to stand firm in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. When I see the word that comes out of them. As I started moving with him, he was he was coming to me. This side he goes the other he, go, he goes the other side of the world. He can dance, but I just told him that he, you, if you have received Christ, your life totally changes. You are not again the other people of the world, and uh, you when when you move with Christ, you know that uh, Christ is in you. You are now the light to them. You are supposed to shine to them. You also changed completely, and he is also following Christ, and he likes the Word of God. Moses is gifted in learning languages. He translates in English, Luganda. Japadola and Kiswahili, a gift that he uses to translate our videos to his community during his discipleship program and evangelism. <laughs> There is one testimony everyone should know about Moses. After losing his mother and brother to the deadly cholera that left the whole family trembling that no one could survive, God had a plan. Discover that I myself as a father, I know God. One day, one time, God will show us that really he has a, has a plan for his life. The work I do in the church, is uh, I translate also when uh, somebody is preaching, translate to another language. Uh, and also, not only that, I preach to people, and not only in the church, but outside also, with the singing. Singing, it is also my talent I have, which I, I do. Uh, I'm now 25 years. Yeah. 
But Moses, being the elder son, I have a lot to put on him because it is very, very important that he, when you are an elder or a leader, very many people hope to get something from you. You are the one, when that is not there, I say, and he said, that used to do like this, I used to go there, <laughs> he used to drive this. And you people, maybe you are going far, we need to, that used to do this. So that's why I could say it's important. Because uh, you're catching up things and very polite. The man who suffered with the, with the cholera when the mother died, uh, for, her, for him to survive was just God's grace. I made a, just a promise. I told God, you see this corona, corona, cholera, they told me that when he entered in into a family, all people, need, all people are going to die. Moses being young, his father, Geoffrey Wokitala, had to step down from his pastoring work in order to raise little Moses while he was still serving at the Busitema Church of Christ in Busia district. I mean, 2012. I was in, in Busitema, that is Busia district. And that is where I got experience and uh, I was also farming. At the same time, doing the work of God. But uh, on the side of, um, that is the, that is the Busitema. From there, then I came here. Were you, by then you already saved? Exactly, I was uh, born again. I was, um, I was, I was, uh, I got saved in 1989. And that was in Kampala, in Kansanga. I bore, uh, the, 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 the church was called um, uh, El Shaddai Ministry. And uh, uh, it was a, a starting church with the papyrus, you know, with the one who contributes some money to buy papyrus to cover the church and so on. The church grew. As I was also growing in the in the Lord, yes. And it was very very thin. Yeah. I wish you can see his foot when he entered here. Mm. And he came to the church. Mm -hmm. Very small. And he's now no, becoming no. a big stomach man. Yeah, yeah just seeing <laughs> Christ. Better than before. There is one thing very important to note from this story of a young pastor and graduate of MTI, Moses Othieno. Even if he never reached his dream of becoming a motor vehicle mechanic, God has chosen him to repair hearts and mend souls for Christ. And up to now, they are still asking that he Ariada and he, the one which came out recently, this the of King, of uh, it was of King. Yeah. Walking with the master. Walking, walking with the master. It was very good, and uh, very many films like uh, like uh, of youths. We have you have we have institution the college here, UCC, like this one of getting pregnant early. It was also teaching youth. Of Jesus. Yeah, of Peter and and Matthew. It was teaching youth, and that is a that is a that is tough choice. Yeah, and you get also you get also a film of of rivers river of gods. Also, it has taught very many people because people tend to go to witch doctors and they think they will get help there and they don't get help. Help is only from God, is where they can get their help. Yeah.
of, uh, of Christ also, Christ's film, they always like. That one, that one there, they don't get tired. Even if you bring now and you put for them, they will be very happy with it, with it, with it. Because we have all the old women and the old ones, they say they have taken long without seeing. And as they see, they change their heart to Christ. So you said you are gifted with the ability to translate many languages. Do you consider that a gift that helps you in your ministry? Yes. When you're using the kids? Yes, because uh, sometimes they will want to interpret where necessary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will use now the language I know, the one they want if I, ha if I know, and I will translate for them, which is good and very important. Yeah. What's your approach when you're ministering to youth? How do you make them want to come to church yes. and create time to want to watch the films? When uh, when approaching the youth, more especially, I just inform them that uh, they are brothers, youth, my fellow youths. We have uh, the solar kit, and we are going to show it in this particular place. Please come and we share. We see what is there. And as they come, we reach it at the time and we ask them, how, what have you watched and what have you seen? What does this film, what does this film teach, teaches you? And after them telling us, we shall sometimes let we bring scriptures which talks about that and we read with them and we tell them, this is what the Bible says, and we should do this.